In the seventh section of the mental status examination training, we will learn about intrapersonal issues. My name is Tom Field, and I produced and narrated this training series. Let's return to the overview. In this training series, we learn via a scaffolding process. In this section of the training, we will learn about intrapersonal issues, and during guided practice, we will review affect and mood, thought process, memory, motor, speech, and interpersonal issues. At the conclusion of the eight sections is an end of training test. I encourage you to follow the handout as we progress. You can use scrap paper for guided practice if you'd like. There's also a sheet available for this. And there's going to be occasions during guided practice video case studies where a section of the mental status examination is not fully evident. And on those occasions, it is okay to indicate unable to assess. The definition of intrapersonal is internally driven behavior. There are three facets to intrapersonal behavior, ego congruence, egocentrism, and ego strength. Ego congruence is the individual's appraisal of whether their behavior is consistent or inconsistent with their personality. When an individual deplores and expresses remorse for behavior, it is inconsistent or dystonic with their personality. When an individual defends or justifies their behavior, this is indicative that an individual does not find a behavior inherently problematic, and thus it is consistent or syntonic with their personality. The premise here is that behaviors we find acceptable are somehow aligned with our core self or personality, and behaviors we find unacceptable are somehow unaligned with our core self or personality. Egocentrism is an individual's narrow focus on themselves, often exaggerating their sense of importance in relation to others. This was briefly referred to in the interpersonal or sixth section of the mental status examination training. It includes conceited and grandiose or expansive concepts. Ego strength is an individual's ability to cope in the face of adversity or impulse. If an individual lacks ego strength, they often engage in non-productive behaviors that highlight their unstable sense of self and tendency to make matters worse in a self-destructive or decompensating fashion. Intropunitive, splitting or dichotomous thinking, and catastrophizing are all examples of problematic or low ego strength. Let's watch some video case study examples to illustrate those concepts. Ego dystonic is described as when an individual does not consider their behavior to be consistent with their core personality. Let's watch an example. I really wish I hadn't said all those things to my mom, though. I'd take them back if I could. In this example, the client is contrite with a serious facial expression that mirrors their vocal content that they experience regret for things said to their mother. The client here doesn't have to say, this isn't me, this isn't who I am. It's enough for them to say that they regret, they express remorse for that behavior. That behavior to them is unacceptable or ego dystonic. Ego syntonic is described as when an individual considers their behavior to be consistent with their core personality. This can result in externalizing blame to others for problematic behavior. I've been drinking since I was like five. It's never been a problem. I drink something like a 12 pack a day every day. Uh, you know, I can handle it. It's not, it's not like I act stupid when I'm drunk or anything. So I don't know why everybody else has such a problem. This client smiles while describing their drinking. And they mention it as something they've always done since age five, that they can handle it, 
that they don't know why everybody else has such a problem. In other words, their drinking seems consistent with their conceptualization of who they really are. It is acceptable behavior to them. This means their behavior is egosyntonic. Conceited is described as egocentric, self-important, arrogant, and proud. It's an example of egocentrism and often hides deeper-seated anxieties and feelings of inadequacy. It can be associated with narcissistic personality. Let's watch an example. So you said you had a test coming up this week? Oh yeah, we got a, a major exam coming up in a couple days, I think. How's the studying going? Oh, I'm not worried about studying for this. How come? I know I'm the smartest person in the class by far. I mean, I'm just I'm just two or three notches ahead of everybody, and, and I know I'm going to do fine. I mean, I'm not worried about it. I don't really need to study. This client shrugs with an oh please expression when asked if she has studied for this upcoming test. Elaborating that she's the quote smartest person in the class by far and doesn't really need to study. While this might be true, this arrogant presentation to others is often used for bragging purposes or compensating for deficiencies. Grandiose or expansive is described as a form of ego inflation, another example of egocentrism. People who are grandiose or expansive believe they can accomplish anything, even outrageous tasks. It can be associated with manic states found in bipolar disorder. Let's watch an example. So the other night, I was, I had this like amazing idea. I mean, it's just, it was just like the best idea I've ever had. I mean, I just felt like I was just so like in tune with everything, you know, like, like just like the creativity of the universe was just like flowing through me right then. And, you know, I stayed up like all night working on this idea and it's going to be totally awesome. It was like this board game and it's going to be totally like to do with these like principles of economics and it's going to be amazing. Like I already know, like it's going to be like, like I'm going to make it, like I'm going to do this and it's going to be like this humongous hit. Like it is going to be a top board game and you, you know, like I've just never seen anything like it. I mean, Monopoly, like complete and utter crap compared to my idea. With an intense facial expression, this person talks about having stayed up all night to work on their idea for a board game. The intensity of their facial expression is matched with this sense of urgency and their ambitious or lofty ideas. And it's this intensity that differentiates grandiosity from conceited. As an aside, staying up all night is a warning sign of mania and grandiosity is probably the most characteristic symptom of bipolar disorder this inflated sense that a person can achieve almost anything intropunitive is described as self derision punishing self for unwanted events even if they are not fully responsible it is turning anger inward and can be associated with depression It's all my fault that my daughter isn't speaking to me. I'm such a witch. I, I just, I'm, I'm so bad to her. She just, and she tells me that. She tells me that all the time, and I, I'm just the most awful parent that there is. I have no parenting skills. I need to go to parenting skills because I am such a bad, 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 bad parent. I. I really, and I, you know, I just wish she was speaking to me, but she's not, and it's all my fault. 
I, it's just it's just all my fault. I you know I shouldn't have talked to her that way. I really shouldn't have talked to her that way. I she says I'm a witch and I am one. I am awful. This client's lack of ego strength is apparent while listening to the verbal content of her speech. She says multiple times with a frown on her face that it's all her fault. This sense of punishing self for unwanted events, even if not being fully responsible, is indicative of intropunitive tendencies. As an aside, the client also mentions several times that she's such a witch, that she has no parenting skills, and the multiple occasions of saying these things is suggestive of rumination. And rumination can be characteristic of intropunitive behavior. In addition to that, the client also says several times that she's a bad, bad, bad person. And this base language also suggests regression. And so you can see that when a person doesn't have an integrated sense of self, when they have problems with ego strength, they can experience problems in a multitude of areas, such as with regression, such as with rumination, such as with intropunitive tendencies. Splitting is described as dichotomous thinking and is another example of having low ego strength. People who engage in splitting perceive events in absolute terms. All or nothing, black and white, good or bad. They cannot see the gray areas. This is associated with borderline personality disorder. Let's watch an example. I got caught stealing last week. How do you feel about that? I'm, I'm just such a terrible person. It, it just... I, I just feel like there's just no no way to come back from that, you know, it just, there's just nothing good about me. I'm just entirely bad. It just makes, it makes me feel like there, there's just nothing good about me. This client focuses on being a terrible person and states that there is nothing good about them. Feeling entirely good or entirely bad suggests black and white thinking. And while the person is blaming themselves in a similar way to someone who is intropunitive would do, and you can, by the way, code both intropunitive and splitting, they also engage in this black and white or dichotomous thinking. And this suggests more, even more problematic um, thinking and behavior because someone who engages in splitting is less likely to be able to tolerate ambiguity, which, as most of us know, is very common to living everyday life. Catastrophizing is described as dramatically predicting that the worst event is most likely to occur. It's another example of um, having difficulty or low ego strength. The person who catastrophizes engages in faulty logic, and this can be associated with depression and also with histrionic personality. Let's watch an example. I spent that $3,000 and now I'm not going to be able to pay my electric bill next week. And if I can't pay my electric bill, then I'm pretty sure my partner is going to leave because she's told me already that this is the last time she's going to put up with my spending. Um, so. I can't pay my electric bill next week. I'm not sure I can pay rent in two weeks. My partner's going to leave because I just did this. I bought this couch. And if my partner leaves, then I'm pretty sure all of our friends are going to still be her friend and not be my friend. So what have I just done? In this example, the person or client engages in faulty logic. They start with not being able to afford their electric bill, and by the time they're done, they have basically predicted that the worst event is going to happen. So they begin with not being able to afford their electric bill, then state that their partner's going to leave, then mention that 
they fear all of their partner's friends will leave them, and then essentially they'll be all alone. And it's this kind of worst case scenario that is evident or indicative of catastrophic thinking. It's now time for you to try your hand at coding intrapersonal issues on the mental status examination. In the next series of video case studies, you are going to code for affect, mood, thought process, memory and consciousness, motor, speech, interpersonal issues and intrapersonal issues. Let's watch the first video case study. Well, I got caught stealing last week. How do you feel about that? Well, I, I really don't think it should be that big a deal. I mean, I'm, I'm just kind of irritated it's been as big of a deal as it has. It doesn't seem to be problematic to you. Not really. I mean, the stuff was overpriced anyway, and you know that these big stores have so much money, they're not going to miss it. I don't see what's wrong with it. Pause the video now and assess the client for affect, mood, thought process, memory and consciousness, motor, speech, interpersonal and intrapersonal issues. This client has a full and congruent affect that um, is an outward expression of their inner dysphoria. They seem to be irritable, which indicates dysphoric mood. We're unable to assess memory at this point in time. Their motor seems fairly relaxed. Their speech is regular rate and rhythm. In terms of interpersonal, they seem dismissive. For example, the interviewer provides um, a minor suggestion or direction and the client says not really, just kind of shrugging it off. As well as for intrapersonal, they are egosyntonic. Their behavior is egosyntonic. Even though they don't say specifically that's who they are, their sense of um, framing their behavior as being acceptable and blaming it on others, uh, saying that the, the stores are not really going to miss the items that have been stolen anyway, is indicative of egosyntonic behavior. Let's watch the second video case study. Last week at work, I'm, I made this terrible mistake. I totally misplaced this really important file and I couldn't find it for like 45 minutes. Luckily I found it right before my boss was supposed to go into this big meeting, so he just kind of, you know, got a little pissy with me and that was it. But, but I'm totally scared I'm going to do it again now. And if that happens again, I, I mean, you know, I just can't stop thinking about what might happen. I mean, if I keep making these, these horrible mistakes, you know, he's totally going to fire me. And then, you know, I'm going to be unemployed, I'm not going to be able to get a reference because I've been such a crappy employee here. And then, you know, I mean, all I can picture is, you know, my house going into foreclosure and everybody thinking I'm like, you know, this total like slacker. And it's just so bad. You know, I, I've called in sick to work for the last two days because I just totally know that that's what's going to happen. Pause the video now and assess the client for affect, mood, thought process, memory and consciousness, motor, speech, interpersonal and intrapersonal issues. This client has a full and congruent affect. Again, they seem dysphoric, somewhat irritable. In terms of thought process, they seem circumstantial in their form of thought, and they have racing thoughts. For memory, we are unable to assess. Their motor seems relaxed. In terms of their speech, it does seem slightly pressured, which would match the racing thoughts. We're really unable to assess interpersonal issues at this point in time. And in terms of intrapersonal issues, we would code catastrophizing. Because the person moves from saying that they got into some difficulties at work, and they're afraid that their house is going to get into foreclosure based on, on that. The, the link there 
is somewhat tenuous and is a worst case scenario. Okay, let's review. Today we learned about ego congruence, looking at both ego dystonic and ego syntonic behavior. We looked at egocentrism and especially examined conceited and grandiose or expansive concepts. And also looked at ego strength, both intropunitive, splitting and catastrophizing forms of low or problematic ego strength. And this concludes section seven of the mental status examination training.